right, my name is Adam Dickens. This is the best co-host on the planet, Trey Adams, and this is episode seven. Episode seven. I'll say it again for the people in the back. Episode seven of the Enough Said Sports Podcast. We are lit and we are ready to roll. Uh, before we really get started, I would like to give a special thanks to Sonner's Wave. If you're watching the, the YouTube clip or YouTube full version of the podcast, they did our intro song. Uh, they're linked at the bottom, so make sure you hit that up. Make sure you hit their email. Uh, if you got a gig you want to uh, hire them for, uh, they're a great, great music collective and just letting it rip. A uh, special friend of mine runs with them. So uh, with that being said, Trey, how are you? Uh, long, busy work week, you know, <laughs> trying to trying, trying to catch up on what's happening in the sports world. Not much, not much. Yes, sir. Same here. Just, you know, fuck work, though. You know what I'm saying? This, this is the release. This is this is the shit that really matters. You know what I'm saying? Family and trying to pop off like uh, everybody else in the world. Uh, before we get started again, uh, I would like to to really encourage you guys to follow us on all, all social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, we be posting on TikTok real heavy. Uh, and we love those. You know, we love interacting with you guys on the social media. Um, it's one of the best ways to really kind of get to understand uh, fan base and just anybody who wants to talk shit. We're always down to talk shit, too. Uh, and, yeah, it's just enough said podcast. This is what we do, man. Talk shit and talk sports. And that's what we do. So, yeah. All right. Uh, with that being said, let's get to the first couple topics, man. Uh First couple topics, we got Fred Van Fleet and we have Dylan Brooks, who both signed to the Rockets. I mean, everybody and their mama son that can that likes to put up shots signed to the Rockets. So, uh, what you got, Trey? What are you feeling about it? I like the Fred Van Fleet. I do like him going there. Um, we all kind of knew he was out of Toronto. Uh, he he kind of came and saw and conquered with them. In the sense of he won his championship with them, he, he was a key piece to that. His coach got gone, so it was a matter of time before he did. Um, so I mean, it, I, I'm happy for him. He getting paid now, the highest under uh, undrafted player in history with this new contract. So I mean, that's this. It's a good story for him. So um, I'm hoping he could carry that, bring some leadership to that team because uh, they definitely need it. With all them young bucks, they definitely need it. Do you think Jalen Green uh, claps uh, Fred Van Fleet's uh, cheeks first, or do you think he goes for Dylan Brooks? I think he ain't Van Fleet ain't playing none of them type of games. <laughs> none of them type of games. <laughs> uh, if anything, if, if anything, Dylan Brooks might. Yeah, he he might take it. <laughs> that guy, and they overpaid for him. But I, 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 what's your what's your comment on Fred going to the Rockets first? Uh, I, I, I really they're gonna be very dependent when it comes to Fred Van Fleet in terms of just a veteran presence um, and really coach that amount of youth. Uh, you know, what, what's a, I mean, Fred kind of struggles with not putting up shots all the time too, but, you know, just mm. being to kind of coach them through the NBA lifestyle um, of not ripping and running like, you know, those, you know, those young bulls for the, the Houston Rockets are, are used to being. Uh, he's going to have to be that veteran presence for them. Uh, so I think he's a lot more valuable. He's getting paid, you know what I'm saying, to put up those stats. But his real true role on that, on that team is to kind of just guide those young kids uh, to where they're, how they're supposed to be playing and really be there for them. Uh, uh, that's what he's there for. That is his role. Yeah, that, that mentoring part is definitely part of it, um, especially yeah. when you got, uh, who was it, like Kevin Porter Jr. now going to the bench. He pretty much – was a starter since coming or being with them, getting drafted by them. Um, he pretty much been the starter because they've been in the rebuilding stage and they're trying to expedite that process a little bit by doing these signings. So now it's like kind of pushes him to the bench and I think that's going to demoralize him in a way. Um, but also, again, if they're winning, if he's a team player, he'll just kind of accept that role. But if not, if you, you, you'll kind of see his character 
based off of pretty much what they do now. I I, I still think there's going to be some type of like civil war or like uh, us versus them when it comes to like the old Houston regime, reg, uh, the old Houston regime, as far as mm-hmm. the young players and the new players they sign like big money. Uh, uh, you know, uh, this is how we used to do things. This is how we do it. Like, there's a culture change that's about to happen. And I don't mm. know if some of those young guys are ready for it. Uh, what do you think is best case scenario for the Houston Rockets in terms of where they end up next year? Because I see all these signings as we're pushing all our chips forward. And I don't think it's that good of a... of They didn't, they didn't have enough done to really push all their chips in. But what do you think? Agree. Agree. I I, I think they did. For them, it was a lot, but it wasn't enough. I don't think they're a playoff team. Um, I kind of see them as what Minnesota was last year um, in a sense of they may, may not squeak in uh, the even play in tournament. And if they win a couple games in a play in tournament, then so be it. But I don't, I don't even see them like, I, I don't see them making the playoffs. I see them possibly getting that 10th seed, Losing that uh in that playing tournament to somebody that deserves it or more better, and they go from there. Like if they made another splash signing or trade, if they were to get get like Jalen Brown or somebody like that, I could see them being better in a contender or not a contender, but a playoff team. But because they again just Fred by himself, and then Dylan Brooks is just the one side of the ball kind of player on defense. They they they're still missing offense. Jabari Smith is still developing, and he again he's not he's not a walking twenty yet. Again, he's not he should be getting at least fifteen and ten at the four, but he's he's not doing that yet. Um, and their center, oh their center, freaking I'm gonna say butcher his name, but uh, Selgin, that sucker's a beast. I ain't gonna hold you. That's I, I love watching him play. I love watching him play. But again, I just think they need one more key scorer to actually say. We're in the playoffs. That's why I think they're right. When it comes, I mean, we're on the same page when it comes to Segun. I think he's he's a bright young spot. You know, everybody's hype on the the international players, and I mean, he's put up plenty of proof as to why. Uh, you know, he may even go for most improved player next year if mm-hmm. they really uh, put him in the right spot. I I I just see the signs they have to kind of really entice just some fights. Like I. What I mean by that is, like, Fred puts up shots. Dylan Brooks puts up ill shots. And the players they already had do the same thing. And so I, I see them as um, there has to be some type of understanding between them to, you know, there has to there has to be an understanding of who's actually going to be putting up those shots. Mm-hmm. Who gets to put up the shots. And, you know, with this new and old crew that they have going... If there's got to there's gonna be some fights like they we're gonna be hearing so many different stories about people not being happy and I feel like Houston what they did was they spent money you know they they tried to use the whole you know I'm gonna throw money at the problem and fix it mm-hmm. but I don't think it's gonna fix it I didn't I didn't think they got enough bang for their buck you know what I mean Fred can really only guard one position if we're being honest sometimes. He can guard the two, but for the most part, he has to be on the one. And then, same thing for Dylan Brooks. I mean, he, he can guard the one and two, sometimes a three. But, you know, the for the most part, this whole team is pretty small on the, on the you know, additions, I would say. And didn't get as much bang for the buck as what, what a lot of teams want. Well, they definitely paid for Dylan Brooks. That was an overpay. This guy's not worth 20 mil a year. I'm sorry. Yeah, he's not he's not worth twenty mil to play just to possibly play defense and talk trash and get four or five fouls or maybe get teed up every other game. He he is not worth twenty mil for that. I think he was a probably good between ten and fifteen. But again, for four years you pay him twenty mil, that that's that's a lot. I, I, that's an overpay. That was a reach. I don't think and, they, they should have did that. And then at the same time, is Fred worth the max? Is, is Fred Van Fleet really worth the max? I don't think so, and I don't. He's a good player, but he's not great. And especially with this market of you, really gotta make your max players count for something. Yeah. And then you throw all this money at Dylan Brooks. It just seems super inefficient way to really base a team around 
you know, those players. I, I don't, I just don't see it happening. And is Jalen Green, is he going to be what this team is based off? Who is this team based off in the first place? Exactly. Exactly. It should be Jalen Green I, because he's the future, but. I don't, I don't think, I think he's overrated in my opinion. I just think he's just like a slasher. I think he's a, he's a young Rudy Gay in the sense of all he can do is dump. Um, Rudy Gay over time developed a jump shot and became more of a all around scorer. But when he when he first came out and he was with Memphis and all he did was just highlight dunks, that's all Jalen Green is to me. I don't I don't think he's a, he's not a two way player. Um, he he shows at times where he just like gives up on plays or just gives up on the game itself. Again, that's part of the development. But I I don't believe in Jalen Green. I don't think that's somebody I would say he's a cornerstone that I'm about to build my franchise around. I don't I don't see that in him. I don't see the dog in him. I don't. I mean, he's good for throwing up threes and clapping cheeks, but I mean, I I just don't know what else. You know, the just... wrong the wrong kind of cheeks, don't you think? God, man, that video is crazy. What do you think about that video? Like, just for it to come out, uh, you know, especially with a teammate. <laughs> he can't even but... defend himself. Like, <laughs> God, you know, his girl because his girl is bad. If I don't know if you ever seen her, but she's bad as hell. I'll see you a picture later. But anyways. It, no, she she plays. If I'm not wrong, yeah, nah, she bad. Uh, she <laughs> used, so she used to. It, this is pointless, but she used to date uh, Puff Diddy's son, uh, or Diddy's son. I don't know why I said Puff Diddy like a dumbass, but yeah, he, he used to date Diddy's son, and now she fuck. Let me sing this right now, real quick. We'll make this. Quick. Go ahead though. Well, yeah, what do you think about the situation? Is that is that something like you played team sports growing up? Is that something you saw? And in, 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 in high school, not in college, not in not in high school. I mean, in high school, not in college. Go. Close the door. Thank you. Um, I don't, I don't see her on the profile, so they might have broke up. Um, I, yeah, I was, I would say I saw it in, in 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 high school, like you know, as far as playing football and playing like slap ass in locker room. Like we had this shit where like you turn the the locker room light off and like you just start like slapping each other's asses and shit. I didn't like that shit. I don't play that. But you know, like I I get you know the the team camaraderie or I guess there was this undercover ain't guy. nothing team camaraderie about this dude humping the <laughs> shit out of his freaking man ain't hey, nothing about no team no my Hell man no. was my man was stroking the shit out of him bro like he was giving some Hell anger no. thrust like it won't even like normal like thrust bro like it was I'm angry but I'm taking it on like he gave I've him been wanting to do this for a minute <laughs> he gave my attitude I'm, adjustment dog that shit was crazy son I've been wanting to do this for a minute. That's what it looked like. <laughs> Graham Poober said Otani. <laughs> a random a random comment about Otani. He's the GOAT. That's funny. All right. That's so Kyrie re-signed with Dallas. And I do think that was the smartest move for him. I don't think he had many options, honestly. Um, again, everybody's was over the cap. They really didn't have the money to pay for him. It was either going to be a sign and trade, and most likely Dallas was like, "Yeah, that's not happening." So he kind of took what his best option was if he wanted to get paid. Let alone again, he didn't really have the full season with Luca. I think it is unfinished business on their side. So I, I do think they'll they'll be able to work it out. But I do think that was the best move for him, and I'm I, I'm I'm curious to see how this goes out moving forward about uh, seeing Luca and Kyrie together. Yeah, no, I, I think we both uh, agreed at the time, it was a couple podcasts ago, that Mavericks, Mavericks were, like, the perfect place for him to sign. I mean, I think he's very, super smart. Like, the comeback from, you know, the the drama-oriented, you know, last couple of years, and he still put up 26, 27, 5, and 6. Mm -hmm. Like, that, you know, he knew what he had to do to come back to get this contract. Uh, I also think that he knew that the Mavericks really wanted him because if they didn't sign him, that was kind of it for the Mavericks. Like, mm -hmm. you're going to go in with just Luka? We saw what that looked like before. It Facts. wasn't the prettiest team basketball we've seen on the on the planet. And so I think when you have someone like Kyrie and he's the only chance you got, you got to throw the money at him. So they, they would have been dummies if they didn't. Uh, I, you know, we both agreed too a couple episodes ago that like 
we wanted to see more of a find um, a find team, right? Mm-hmm. We want to see more of a, a them to have some more time to really figure out sets for Kyrie and how they can uh, complete each other's game and help each other. Mm-hmm. Now, don't know if that'll happen still, but you know, we'll rock with it. I I I had some I got some faith in them. Like I said, it's just I mean you gave them half a season, let alone those right after All Star break. Again, Kyrie did his part when he first got there because he got he came there. Luca was still injured, and they went on like a six seven game win streak. Like he he was doing his part, and then when again when he came back, it was just a matter of trying to mesh it all together. But within that time span, that wasn't enough time. Again, superstars are superstars. Yeah, basketball is this it should be simple for. For for us regular people, but for superstars, no, it's really not. Um, so again, just give them more time. I think they'll they'll work it out. They still got some pieces they need to figure out, um, big man wise. But I I do think they'll they'll be able to work it out moving forward. Well, that's that's why I didn't like before is people were looking for someone to blame and they wanted to blame Kyrie for why, you know, they went from in the playoffs to out of playoff contention, mm-hmm. and. I didn't like the fact that people were blaming Kyrie because Kyrie just joined the team. Like, granted, the the trade kind of ruined it for the Mavs because they were doing great before. But when you pretty much reconstruct the whole team at, at you know, right before All-Star, right before the All-Star game, that's your fault. You chose <laughs> to pretty much switch the whole team dynamic around Kyrie and trade your defensive players. That was your fault. It's not not no no one else's, but of course Kyrie's always the the quick one that the media wants to blame and everyone wants to throw it on him because bad things tend to <laughs> happen around Kyrie. Happen around him, facts. But it, it can't be his fault to why you know that team imploded. It, it's you decide to change the whole team at All Star break. That's your fault. Like, and you know. But again, Luca Luca end up getting hurt. They again they, they they made the trade and like I said they went on a win streak when Kyrie was the, the main the it guy. Again, it's just when they got back and trying to work Luca into it. I mean they had a whole bunch of close games where they lost by one possession on for the like the last play type shit. They had like three, they had like more than four or five of them within that when Ky when Luca did get back. So again, it, like I said, it's just a matter of working the shit out. Again, it takes a season. Um to, to, to work superstars out. You can't get them half a season and it'd be like, I right, didn't work by. Like that Nets experiment, don't get me wrong, it was bad, but it wasn't that bad. Like they, they could have tried to work that out longer, but they just said, fuck it, no, we're going to blow this shit up immediately. But I, I, I again, just get them more time. They'll be all right. Well, I mean, even, even if you look at the Heat, you know, back when LeBron and it was Dwayne Wade, it took them at least a half a season. Like you remember how bad their record was to, to, to start that season off? Yeah. It was it was terrible. It took me at least a half a season. I remember they were what? They were fifty percent at like a quarter of the way through the season. People were like, Oh, they don't have a chance. I, re- I remember those headlines. Mm-hmm. And so two and what I'm talking about is two main ball handlers, right? That's just yeah. Le- that's that's two of the smartest ball handlers ever in D Wade and LeBron. How long do you think it's gonna take Kyrie and Luca, who are literally from different countries? <laughs> to learn how to not just compliment each other, but just communicate in a in, in a decent way. Like Lucas yeah. English is okay, but like you have to think about that being just a hump in the road of <laughs> Jalen Green boy. Uh, to be able to really get that figured out, you know, there's a language barrier, there's a culture barrier. Hell, and you know how crazy Kyrie began. Like this man come in different every single day on some different shit. Facts. Facts. So I mean I, I just I, I think it's gonna take some time and I don't think they were prepared for that to take some time. I thought they just thought they were gonna be out there like the Globe Trotters, and just be fucking behind the back passes and alley yeah. and shit. Like it, it don't work like that. Uh, but, but anyway, speak, and, and speaking ahead, of behind ahead. the back passes, shout out the Lamelo Ball. Bro got the bag this summer. Oh my God, that extension. Five year, 260 extension. Oh my God. Ty- Tyrese Halliburton, too. Shout out to him for getting the max. And Anthony um, Ant Man. Oh that my gosh. That extension is ridiculous. These young bucks is getting paid 
before they even hit 25, they're getting, about to be hitting 50 a mil. I mean, 50, 50 a year. Oh, my gosh. Yep. I, I, I mean, I think those are all three for certain players that you can build your franchise around. And we know for a fact that they're not going to be doing anything crazy like gun showing on Instagram. I mean, maybe LaMelo, he got he a little childish sometimes. But, I mean, those are all three players for sure. Tyrese Halliburton is the most professional young player, like NBA-ready, you know, on a maturity level that I've seen the NBA, NBA player been on. So, I think all three of those guys are just ready um, to really just lead that franchise. And they, they earn that money. Absolutely earn that money. And anybody else telling you otherwise is wrong. Dude, how, but Tyrese, like he... I don't know. Tyrese I feel like because nice, he's a he's a beast. He's a beast. But when he was on the Kings, which he was younger, he just got to the league. Mm-hmm. We didn't see him getting paid like this. We didn't see him becoming like. Not gonna say he couldn't be an all star because again, we all know the superstars that we grew up with are leaving and retiring, getting older, etc. So yeah, that could have been his uh his peak in a way. But I didn't see him being like this. I didn't. Like when they trade, when he got traded to Indiana, I was like, it's for a reason that's happening. It's the reason why the Kings gave up on him, but it was also because, I mean, they felt like Darren Fox was the better of the two, so they said, fuck it. Well, well the team was, is, is, was based for De'Aaron Fox. So and yeah. that makes me think the Kings didn't think that Halliburton, they weren't expecting him to develop the way he did. So they didn't expect to have a two headed monster that they were going to have to go back and forth with because essentially. They had to trade him because they were sharing the team. Like, they didn't mm. think Halliburton was going to come in and force getting the playing time he got. And so when you had that, they were like, okay, well, this town isn't big enough for both of them. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah. And, and I think they still could have worked out a, a certain route, but they just didn't. And because of that, you know, it is what it is. Now, what I would say is thank the Kings. Halliburton brought up thanks the Kings because they could have just held on to him. But I'm sure they didn't want to get stuck with those two big contracts at the same time. Mm-hmm. They'd rather pay Zabonis on some bullshit. But uh, that's another story. But, you know. He, it's... he fits them. He fits it. Halliburton he is nice, it. man. I, I'm telling you right now, Halliburton is probably one of my favorite, top ten favorite players out here. Not saying he's a top ten player, but, you know. Hold the door. It, uh, I think, I think, uh, again, Halliburton better thank the Kings for getting that fucking contract. Cause if it won't, man, it, 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 he played he played worth it though. I give him that. You good? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a. Uh, uh, I'm trying to think. What was next? You uh, go next. Lakers. Lakers. Oh yeah. So then. They, this is your team, right? I'll, I'll let you lead with this. Go not ahead. Not really my team. I'm just, <laughs> you're not going to like this. I'm just, I don't really have an NBA team, by the way. We never talked about this. What is your NBA team? I'm a Steph Curry guy, so I'm going to say go to state. See, I'm a LeBron guy. I don't necessarily root for the teams that he's on, but if he's on the team, like, I'm just going to. But I'm not like, I don't have a hard on for the fucking Lakers. Like, this is, that just isn't me. Um. Yeah, that's just kind of how it rock. I kind of gave up on that when fucking Dan Gilbert started coming out crazy talking about LeBron and that like letter when he left. I was like, yeah, mm-hmm. I can't root for a team though. Like this shit just ain't worth it. Too <laughs> Um, yeah, Lakers. Uh, based on their free agency moves, they added. Um, hold on, I have a list. Uh, they added. Torian Prince, Gabe Vincent. They also added Cam Radish. They re-signed. Uh, D'Angelo Russell, they at, uh, re-signed uh, Rui to a contract, I believe, uh, and they let go of Dennis Schroeder, and I'm trying to think of any, oh, they uh, let Mo Bamba kind of go and do his own little free agency thing, that's really it I can think of. Yeah, so uh, do we think uh, they improved? As far as those moves, or do we think that they're pretty much in the same spot? Same. 
they're in the same spot. They they really didn't improve anything. They did most of their stuff at the end of the by the end of the trade deadline last summer, and they felt like based off of them getting to the Western Conference this year, that they felt like that's what they were supposed to be in the first place. If they would have started off with that team, I don't think that was the case, in my opinion. Um, but they feel like they they can get right back there, or they should, if not be better because of the the transactions they made. I don't necessarily think that. I think again, that team is is like Gabe Vincent isn't uh, the 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 backup that you're looking for. Um, let alone again now starter, you got bro. He's gonna be the starter. You, you think he's gonna start over D'Angelo? That's why I keep seeing. I'm not saying he should be. I'm just saying that's what he is. I mean, regardless, it's like I'm not worried about neither of them two in the playoffs. I feel like because you don't know, again, in my opinion, Gabe, Gabe is a better shooter. Mm-hmm. Yes, but again, you don't know. I mean, you don't know what you're gonna get from him. And I think when when you need him, I mean, it was only one finals, one uh, his first time there and all that. So I'm not going to hold that against him. But again, you don't know what you're going to get out of him. So I, I don't necessarily think that was a big upgrade. Um, they were supposed to re-sign uh, Uchimura and Austin Reeves. If they would let either of them walk, LeBron would have been pissed and been bitching all over the place. So I don't. I, I think they did everything they were supposed to do. They didn't do anything that was like popping and exciting. So I think they did what they were supposed to do. Uh, I agree with you. I'm kind of stuck in a weird space. I want to say they improved because I do like some of the moves they made. They also re-signed Austin Reeves. I forgot about that, um, which a lot of people didn't think they would pay him that money. Uh, I, I thought that the Cam Reddish move was a very slight but still improving move just because he can guard so many different positions. He's also just good at just about everything. Like, he's not, you know, just really good at a couple of things. He can. He's just an overall good basketball player. Uh, I think that Gabe Vincent, I think it gives a little bit more attitude to that, to that group. Like, Dennis Schroeder, them letting Dennis Schroeder go, I was kind of surprised because, he, to me, he played good defense on Steph, uh, not – he did a good job on – he was the only one out of him and D'Angelo Russell that could guard somewhat Jamal Murray. Out. So I was kind of surprised at them letting Schroeder go. I kind of get it. Like, I'm not super sad about Schroeder being let go at the end of the day. Uh, I just thought they would choose Schroeder over D'Angelo Russell just because mm-hmm. of how bad D'Angelo Russell did in that Nugget series. He did absolutely mm-hmm. terrible, especially when it comes to just guarding and his shooting was terrible too. He just had an overall bad uh, series. With that being said, I mean, Torian Prince signed, signed him, which again, he's not a big name, but he can guard multiple positions too. I see them getting a lot bigger in terms of in that wing spot, a lot bigger, a lot better. Uh, and just players that can overlap in skill sets, they can do just about a little bit of everything. You know what I mean? Like, just about everything. And so I think they got bigger. Uh, I think they got a little bit more savvy as far as, you know, people that can just, again, just do a little bit of everything. That That's where I think they got better. They got people, multi, like, they got the, uh, what's the old uh, camping tool with the knife and the spoon and the... Uh, what do you call it? The uh, you know what I'm talking about, though, right? The uh, yeah, the multi, uh, the I mean, multi tool. It's, it's, tool it's or not coming to me. They got people right. that can just do a little bit of everything, and I think that's what they really needed. They understand that, like, they don't want to come off a screen and be in a, a mismatch. So I think that's what they were really aiming for. Uh, putting if you need to put a wing guy on uh, a smaller point guard that's a little bit shiftier they'll be in a good matchup and be okay with that. I think that's what they were aiming for. And defensively, they just got better. We'll see if that's enough for them to – I know they beat Golden State last year, but we'll, we'll see if that's enough to keep up with them. Yeah. Also, the Austin Reeves move, I'm not against it. I'm not, like, totally in love with it. I do want to see where he progresses. But he he, does... took, he took a pay cut. He took a pay cut. No, what are you talking about? He got the max he could get. He got the max he could get because of his the year that he's in. But with if he could have went somewhere else, he could have went with the Spurs and possibly got more than that. How? He could have got because that's what I read. I could have I read like the Spurs is about to offer him 
more than that than what he got, but he wanted to be in LA. From what I from based on the years he's in because he was undrafted, I believe. Could mm-hmm. be wrong. That's the max the undrafted player could receive because he was undrafted. So you okay. for example, like if you're a first pick like uh fucking uh, uh Lamelo or um fucking the folks we just talked about, uh, fucking who uh, Tyrese Halliburton. If you're a first yeah. round pick, you can make fucking two hundred plus million dollar contract. But if you're on drafting, mm-hmm. you can't make but a certain amount. And that's Got just you. to stop people from having like a flash in the pan and signing them to something crazy. For it's to prevent, it's to help franchises not go into fucking yeah. debt. Yeah, of course, much. of course. <laughs> um. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, apparently LeBron loves the fucking moves that the Lakers made because he made a little slouch on fucking Instagram like a 50-year-old. Right? But, you know, he apparently he, loves he has moves. He, he has to do that. I, no, he don't. Just, he's the man don't give a fuck. <laughs> he has to do that. Because if not, it's going to be, oh, my God, LeBron doesn't approve. LeBron is upset. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Yeah, whatever. Late GM. Late GM. <laughs> yeah. It, it's always going to be something. So, I ain't, like I said, they ain't, in my opinion, they didn't make a really a splash move. But based off of everything that's been going on so far, do you feel like anybody did make a splash move that surprised you or that was like, wow, that was that was a good shit? Anybody? I, I think the moves that were very underrated. I think that the Grizzlies made two moves, but I'm going to combine them into one because they kind of give off the same attributes for both of the the signings. Is the Grizzlies signing Derrick Rose and getting Marcus Smart in the trade, I thought were brilliant moves, mainly because you bring in two essentially point guards, veteran points, okay, who can both play decent defense, okay, Marcus, you can say good defense. Rose ain't mm. that the best, but he can do a little bit of everything. On top of that, you got John Moran, who's going to be suspended for 25 games. So you need a point guard, especially after you got rid of Tyus Jones. Right? Did I say his last name wrong? Or am I good? Yeah, no, you good. You good. So you got rid of Tyus Jones. So you need two point guards. You got two veteran presence guards who can not only just play – but they can guide that team like a veteran should do. Uh, on top of that, you just have both of them have playoff experience, like they that know what to do, when to crank it up. You know what they. I think also Marcus Smart and Derrick Rose are really good as far as like reading the room, as far as like what the team kind of feels like in a, a coach's kind of way. Uh, mm-hmm. So I, I give them that. I mean, Derrick Rose is the ultimate backup point guard that you really want on your team. And, you know, I think, you know, he he just provides a lot to the team. Also, you have a point guard who's in a, who's been in a similar spot as John Morant. Obviously not the same reasons, but, you know, they've been on top of the world before. And right now, Ja, you know, because of his trouble, he's been at the top of the world, but he's going through some obstacles right now. And Derrick Rose can kind of coach Ja Morant through those things. And that's why I really love those moves. Not only just good financially on the basketball side, but for just a team bonus as far as having veterans. Great move. <sighs> You're about to me for this. They brought in that old dirtbag in Derrick Rose, like you said, to be a mentor. He ain't Did playing. Did you just call Derrick Rose a dirtbag? Let me that's finish. Let me finish. Fucked that dirtbag, he don't even touch the court. That boy ain't playing. He did literally to teach this man... I'm from Chicago. I live that life that you think you want to live. You don't want that life. Shut up and play basketball. That's what he's there for. He's not playing. I get the whole locker room scenario and leadership. Yes, he's there for that as well. But he's really there to to tell John Morant, shut up. You're not about that life. Play basketball. Do everything I could have did, but I got injured. On top of the simple fact, teach him how to be safe with his body in a sense of this guy is just a high flyer. He wants to bang on everybody like how I used to. And look what happened to me. And if you don't stop what the hell you're doing, you're going to end up like me. Bro, he's a journeyman, Derrick Rose. I mean, let's be real. He's not playing anymore. It's like a it's like a big yeet, clap, clap, yay, yay, every time he gets in the game because you it's like, oh, yeah, what you did in the past, bro, it's like one year. Relax. Take it easy. Um, I, The Marcus Smart thing, yes, I do think that was a good move. I think it was smart. He's active. He's a defender. He's a leader. I agree. That was a good move. 
Derrick Rose, that shit is just for show to the whole, like you said, behind the scenes thing. But it ain't nothing to do with the basketball court other than stay, uh, don't get injured and stay healthy. That's all John, uh, Derrick Rose is there for. I would highly disagree. The reason why I would disagree with you is because when he was with the Knicks, he was obviously playing with Tom Thibodeau, who was mm. notoriously known for just wanting defensive players. We all know Derrick Rose isn't that like hardcore when it comes to defense. So with that being said, I think he'll obviously get more playing time. He should have got more t- playing time with the Knicks, if we're being honest with you. But no, he shouldn't have. Over yes, who? He should have, bro. What are you over who? About? Over who? Who was he playing over? <laughs> Who was he playing over? Can Name me that guard he that he's taking. Game for 10 to 15 minutes? Bro, he played for Tom Thibodeau, his coach that he, when he had his best season, he played for. That's why he went there. That's the only reason why he was there. Bro, Derrick Rose hasn't been talked about in forever, bro. He, and he shouldn't be. Bro, why are we even talking about this, man? Not even, That's how two, not even less than a, a year or two ago, this man just put up, what, 40 or 50 in a, a fucking game? Come on oh now. God. You tell me you for the, from that for, for who? For who? For who? What are you talking about? Who he put the point? Who? What team was he on when he put that up on? He was with the Knicks still, I believe. My point exactly. Who was their point guard? I mean, Brunson. But who's the backup? No, Brunson was not there. Brunson was not there. Oh, no, Brunson yeah, just exactly. got there. Obviously, yeah, yeah. My point. So they didn't even have nobody. So that's what I'm trying to say. We talking about the bum Knicks and we talking about the good Knicks. They, bro, he he's irrelevant right now. And again, they use no, him as a man. mentor and that's it. You that's that's he it. He can't attribute on the basketball. You so you think no you just for what? What can he do? He you can't he do nothing. Just Is that what you yes, said? absolutely. Yes, he should have been retired. He can't do nothing. Yes, he can't he can. do nothing. Why? Okay, okay. I want to. I want to have a good. I'm not saying he, he's going to be out there dominating, but I think he's a good backup point guard. Okay. They can give you good 10 to 15 minutes. Fuck 20 if he's got to. He is not playing. He's not playing. He's going to be sitting over there looking like you Donis Haslam. Get over okay, it. Okay, who's going to be playing? It's so point, point guard for the first 25 seasons. What are we, going to, what are we talking about? Who is Some, a, young, a younger player. Somebody they could develop. Oh, it ain't going to be, Mark, it ain't going to be Derrick Rose. Smart. You don't, so you don't think they're going to play Derrick Rose? No, he's not going to play. <laughs> he's going to sit there like you Donis Haslam with the whole oh sweatsuit God. on. Looking like yo, I'm. It's cold in here. That's what he about to be doing. You, you blowing that, me, man. You're that man ain't playing, bro. You're that man ain't playing. You're You'll blowing. see. That man uh, ain't playing. Every every time he play in the game, I'm gonna send you his box score. Every time, <laughs> every point, right? You about to? <laughs> I'm about to blow this shit up again. I don't think he'll dump me. I just I think he'll. He's good for. I think he's just a great bench point guard, and they're gonna. They need like you can't just have him like. On some Udonis Haslam type shit. Yes, you can because they, they did it last year. <laughs> he's not even vocal like that. He's not even vocal. Like this man gonna be silent as fuck on the bench. Like no man, he's he's got to play. And you know whether <laughs> he really helps John practice as far as lead by example and just be a better and come to work every every day. You know whatever man. But like I'm telling you, I love those moves and I think it it'll be ultimately great for that team. Now if you can. Point, a good developing point guard for the Grizzlies. Let me know. Let let me fucking know. Cause <laughs> I doubt let, it. let go of the past, yo. Is the Derrick Rose time has come? Is is I mean, it's come and gone. Let it go. He, he, on, he's, he's done. Don't play, let it don't go. Play my boy like that. I, let I hope it go. Come back and put up a good thirty in a couple games. I'll be so excited. But yeah, go ahead. Who do you think uh, popped off? Who do you think popped off? Made some good moves. Um. Honestly, I, I really don't have a team. I feel like I feel like it's it's been a dry offseason. I feel like the stuff that we kind of predicted to happen in a sense of worst teams getting the best available players like the like Van Fleet the to Houston, we kind of predicted that, but nothing really happened. I feel like, it's, and that's why I say it's, it's been a dry summer. Um, in the sense of all the stars are, I mean, only major thing that happened was Phoenix. I don't. I don't think anything else really was like. Oh my God! Like the Porzingis one, it was all right, but it wasn't. I don't think that's gonna put them over the hump, no. So uh, I mean, I, I don't. I don't really don't. I really don't got one. Well, I mean, I do think a couple of these moves that we're about to talk about in just a second were could change that. Uh-huh. Well, they uh-huh. were supposed to happen on draft night. They were. They were supposed to happen on draft night, but they didn't. And because not now, they're drawn out, and now we're going what a whole week talking about. Uh, we're going a whole week talking about Damon Lillard and what's about to happen with him, and because it's been drawn out, so it's 
that yeah. that situation is just oh my gosh annoying like in a sense of like you said it should have happened on draft night the blazers knew they were going to draft scoot henderson because they're like we're not going to pass up this opportunity in a, in a sense of if we do need to possibly rebuild or try to trade Damian Lillard for another young superstar or another young piece or something like that. They knew what their plan was. Long story short, they knew what their plan was and they dragged it out because they both Damian Lillard and Portland was trying to see who would nudge first. We all saw it. We all knew it that we all knew what their intentions was. They both said it to uh, made statements to the public and everything. And now it's all of a sudden I want to demand a trade and then demanding the trade part. Is it the frustrating part? I feel like the frustrating part for me is this guy said he provided a list of teams he would prefer his debt to be his his preferred destination right now he's saying and his, he's telling his agent who's telling these other teams that aren't those teams i'm not willing do not trade with my player my 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 uh my client my player my client would be unhappy playing for you he only wants to go to miami my guy do you have a no trade clause then who the fuck are you to sit there and tell me I, I have to send you there. You didn't do shit for me. You didn't win me a championship. You don't have a no trade clause. Why do I feel like I'm obligated to send you where you need to go? And I don't want nobody back. They already said they don't want Tyler Hero back. What are they going to do with that? That's why they need a third team involved. You're asking for a lot, my guy. I would send that motherfucker to whatever team that has the best trade package. And I don't give a fuck about his happiness. That's not my problem. You, you're under contract. You can retire if you don't want to play. But I don't give a fuck about your happiness. Fuck you. You didn't do shit for me. Well, you can say that. You can say that, right? But the honest point that the honest point that I'm gonna make is Portland doesn't have any leverage. Because they're they're playing middleman, okay? In the in this, right? Damien says, I wanna go to, to Miami, right? Mm -hmm. No other team is gonna take him because they don't want to deal with a disgruntled player. They don't mm -hmm. want to deal with him not being happy. So the Trailblazers mm -hmm. literally have to listen to what Dame is saying, and they have to listen to whatever trade partner they're going to have. They don't have any leverage. Essentially, they have to get rid of him and just take whatever they can get because no team who thinks he may be unhappy with them wants him. So it's essentially on the Trailblazers to just get this deal done and get what they can happen with Miami. They have to get this done. It's not. There's not going to be anything that happens from, it because nobody wants Dame to be unhappy. Because essentially, you're you're tossing your your problems that you already have a disgruntled player, to another team. Nobody wants that. And I I agree, but I disagree because that's where we're giving. Well, not we, because I'm not in the league office and all of that. But that's Jeez. where the league is giving. <laughs> this is where the league is giving too much leverage to players. That, like, what's the point of the no trade clause then? Only 10 players in history had it, or 11, right? Only that many amount of people had it. This motherfucker does not have it. Why do I feel like I I have to a block, uh, I have to listen to what he says, and then other teams are like, okay, yeah, I don't want a disgruntled player. If he's under contract, he doesn't have a choice but to play or retire. It's that simple. I feel like the league is getting soft in the sense of they're letting players dictate shit, and then when things don't go the player's way, it's or what the or the, the the team's way. The players are like, well, I want out. What the fuck? I thought this was a league. I thought this was like literally you want to play. You want to blah, blah, blah. Here's the, you. I'll pay you this. You go do what you got to do. I thought it was that. Well, I feel like this is too much baby and it's too many divas in the league. And now I feel like Damian Lillard was not never the, the guy to show his ass. I fucking love Damian Lillard. I, the way he played, the way he carried himself as a person. I fucks with him. But right now, he has like a little baby back bitch in the sense of you're trying to dictate something that necessarily you're not old. You, you're not old uh, to, to go to the destination you want. You don't have a no trade clause. You, I don't have to do what you tell me to do. I just I just I, don't, I just think he's not entitled to that. Well, I think what Dame is doing now is essentially he's saying I could have did this the whole time I was here. And essentially I'm going to create a metaphor. OK, so you have a, a girl that you just started dating. And for for months and months on end, you're like, hey, I don't like how this is going in our relationship. I don't like how you post naked pictures on Instagram or whatever, or whatever disagreements you have. And you keep saying things, and they're not listening, right? Mm -hmm. And you know this is what you want. You keep saying things, and she's not listening. 
The team's not listening to Dame for years to come and couldn't create a winning team with him on board. And so now he's like, I could have did this the whole time, but you guys didn't listen to me. So now I'm going to make a point and I'm going to use the power I had this entire time. And so he tried to vocalize his concerns for years to come. He tried to give them multiple chances over and over and over again. And they didn't listen or they didn't get the job done. They didn't do their half. Because essentially, for a player in a team, there are two sides to holding up the bargain. Right? Dame's supposed to, to, to show up, put points up, and try to play the best basketball he can with the team he's got. Okay? The other half is I'm supposed for the team for the franchise. My responsibility is I'm supposed to put the best team I can around you mm-hmm. at, to win, and I'm gonna just give you everything to attribute to that. They didn't help. They didn't do what they were supposed to do to win a championship. And so he's like, okay, bet you don't listen to me. You didn't want to do the things I asked for. You didn't hold your end of the bargain up. So I'm leaving, and I'm not only leaving. I'm tired of. Speaking up, so now I'm gonna do things my way, and I'm gonna I'm gonna get what I want, which is go to a winning team, which is what I could have been doing. I gave you grace periods, I gave you years to get your shit on track, and you didn't do that. So now it's my my time, buddy. My time. I'm sorry nobody wants to come to Portland. I'm sorry you can't recruit nobody to Portland to come play with you. That's my problem. Like I said, I'll get throw the money at any and everybody. But again, if I don't have the cap space because I'm too busy overpaying for keeping you happy, because if I would have traded CJ McCollum earlier, you would have been unhappy. If I would have traded, um, who else did they have? Because it was he was he was too friendly, and it was it was it was all about that his his kind of who he is, which again I love his family oriented, being loyal and all that. But again, that's not going to win. That's not, uh, Some of that doesn't always convert into winning. Now, all of a sudden, he wants to win. And it's like, okay, cool. You're still under contract for two more years. You're not an unrestricted free agent until 20, uh, 2025. If you trade it somewhere that you don't want to be, you could tell them to trade you. But I'm going to trade you for whatever is best for me and my team moving forward because I'm not thinking about you and your pockets. I'm not thinking about your happiness. I'm thinking about my franchise for the next five to ten years. I don't think I, they don't owe him anything. I, they really don't. And if they if the league if they feel like they do owe him something, that's on them. But again, that's where they fuck up at, and that's why Portland is the fucking wasteland right now because the the, the way they do business isn't really business. They they they're thinking too much instead of on the business side of things. And again, it's it's kind of shown with this whole process. It's shown because again, they should have just traded his ass during during what you call it during draft night. If you was going to draft Scoot, you should have just traded him. And if you wasn't going to trade him, you should have traded the pick and got, again, a, a, a player for it. But they, they knew what they wanted to do. They knew this was going to happen. They just, they they don't, they don't have the right people in control. They really don't. Just plain and simple. They don't have the right people in control. Well, it's not about, I, would, I wouldn't say it's about owing them anything. They just, again, they don't have the leverage. Because essentially what you're suggesting is them tossing their, their problems onto someone else <laughs> in a trade pack. No one wants to deal with the problems they got right now. That's why it's such a What's big the deal. problem that he's not going to be happy? If he's traded yes. to Boston, for instance, if he's yes. traded to Boston, I think Boston would be a perfect trade if they were to talk about if they didn't want Jalen Brown anymore or they knew they wasn't going to resign Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown traded to Portland, Portland would take that. And if Boston is willing to take on Damian Lillard, I think he would take on a winning team that they're winning right now that he could contribute to and compete for a championship. It gives them everything they want. But no, he's specifically stuck on Miami for some reason. I don't give a fuck about that. That's what I'm trying to say. I think if they there, there's ways they could work some shit out. Again, it's just like you said, teams aren't willing to because he's pretty much saying, don't trade for me. You do not have a no trade clause. That's the whole point of a no trade clause. That defeats the purpose of it. Well, that defeats also, the purpose. I also feel like you're kind of stuck on the fact that supposedly he's saying only in Miami. That's what we're hearing. But also understand that franchises, specifically owners, kind of use the media to uh, adjust their chips. So essentially, the they owner could have easily, or the team, or media, like they literally have their own, you know, like media consultants. Like they know what the fuck yeah. they're doing. So they could have put yeah. that out to make Dame look bad. We know that's not Dame. Why the fuck? Why would we think that Dame would just do that randomly? I don't he's know. never I, done anything. He's never done anything know. like that. I believe in habits. I believe in habits and what people know. The Trailblazers, they put out multiple mis fake rumors leading up to this. 
right? Mm. Have they not? Mm. It, it's clearly how many how many off seasons have we heard about? Oh, Dame wants to leave. Duh, duh. I'm telling you right now, they are trying to manipulate the media in a way that makes Dame seem bad. But we know who Dame is because Dame stayed the same the whole time he's been with Portland. I agree. And, and also, Dame, Dame also is the person to speak up. If he feels, if he's read enough shit about him, he's also the type that he'll speak up and he'll set the record straight. He's always been that type. If it's if it's multiple shit, multiple, like he's like, I didn't ask for that trade. Don't 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 believe shit nobody said. He's that type of person. That's why I fucks with him heavy. That's why I do. But now I do think he is playing puppet master. I do think he is behind this. I do. I do. And I'll push another thing is too. I'm pretty sure Dame watched the Nuggets and Jokic get a championship mm. and be pissed because that's how he wanted his narrative, his story to play out. He wanted Agreed. to be with a franchise for eight years, and at the end, in the middle of his journey, NBA journey, to get a championship and let the hard work paid off that he spent all that time with the Trailblazers. He wanted that to happen. And the fact that it didn't happen, he's like, "It's you guys' fault because I haven't changed this whole time. I've only gotten better, better." And been one of the best point guards. Top 70. Voted top 75 player I believe. And they didn't hold up their bargain. So I'd be pissed too man. I'm using all my leverage. I'm pulling a LeBron like man this. I'm getting out of here and I'm getting it how I want it. And that's the only reason why I'm, I'm team Dame to be honest with you. I, I. With this. With all of this though. I do think it's in a hard position to make something happen. I honestly feel like I know I said before I wanted Dame to go to Miami. I, I caught this a couple weeks back. I don't know mm. if you remember what I said. Him and Jimmy on the team would be great. But because Miami just doesn't have enough, it's not a good trade. Like, you don't have anything. If you trade Bam or you trade Tyler Hero, there's nothing to back you up. And granted, they're great at doing, you know, raising undrafted talent. But I can't think on that, and that's just it's an ugly team if they if they do trade Hero or Bam, especially Bam. Now if you trade Hero, I'm kind of like cool with it, but you trade Bam, man, I'm out on the heat to be honest, because I envision Jimmy, Bam, and him, and some of the undrafted talent. I can work with that, but I can't work with Bam being gone because to me he is heat. And that's what I'm saying. So now you want something unrealistic. So if he is the behind the scenes telling his agent X, Y, Z and all this stuff, now you're trying to push something that's really unrealistic or it can't happen because, again, contract-wise, it just doesn't match, let alone Portland already said they just do not want – Tyler Hero is not going to fit their system, which it won't. They already got a two-guard, and they already got their point guard of the future. What is Tyler Hero going to do? So, hey, Make the man just put up shots, dog. Like fuck you. Like you're not gonna win the championship anyway. You're not going to the playoffs. You're not exactly. So what? <laughs> what, is, what is he gonna? So what is he gonna do with you? I already got somebody who averaged more points than you at the two, and I got my point guard of the future who's uh, projected to be better than you. What are you gonna do? You're not coming off the bench. You're not making that much money. So what are you gonna do? It's, it's no point for him to go to Portland, and that's what they're trying to say. We're like, look, we're trying to get you to, to Miami, but we need another team or another teams. To help out with this because there's no way they have enough but you're just stuck on if he is doing this he's stuck on i'm going i want miami i want to go to miami i want to go to miami i, I think philly would be the perfect perfect spot for him bro a hundred percent think and you let's just say you trade hard like literally just do an even swap maybe give a a couple draft picks extra on top of harden i think that's perfect i think that is perfect I mean, I hardly don't want to be with the Trailblazers. We know that, but like, who cares? I, I think. I mean, no, they, they they would trade him. It would be a three team trade, yeah. and yeah, they, he he wouldn't stay there. He would not stay there. I think that I think that would be perfect. Uh, just I would love to see Dame in that Embiid uh, screening two man game. Like, I just would love that to to the end of the earth. Where where do you think he eventually ends up to with this whole uh, debacle? Of uh, he's gonna go. He gonna end up in Miami. It's just like I said. It's gonna be another team that's gonna have to step up and offer something that's gonna uh please everybody. Because again, it's they don't have enough trade assets and the, the the with the cap and everything, it doesn't match. So they just need another couple teams, maybe a three four team trade. But if anybody's willing to or able to do trick trades like that, 
it's fucking Pat Riley. It, it's it's possible. Like again, they they've done multi team trades in the past and it worked out for everybody. Like so, if 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 it's possible, don't get me wrong, it's possible. It's just it's going to take a little bit more time. Like I know he wants it right right now. That shit ain't happening overnight, though. That shit's going to take some time. Well, I definitely think the longer it goes, I think the better it looks for for the um, for Miami because the yeah. pocket is essentially against the Trailblazers. Like they have to, no matter what, they have to get it done at some point, right? Yeah. And it's Miami's again. Miami's got all the leverage. They've got the. They are the destination that he wants to go to. So they get all this support, and Trailblazers are left hanging. They don't understand how much of a disadvantage they are at the time, but they have to get it done in some some type of fashion. I if I if I'm the Trailblazers, I get what I can get, and just trust that Scoot is going to lead the way from here on out. That's what I would do. I feel like if you try to be hard headed and try mm-hmm. to ask for more than what you can possibly get, I think it makes them look like they don't trust Scoot or the future with Scoot as much as what they should. And I feel like you just give the confidence in him and just rock with it and just get this over with. Because the faster you get this over with, <laughs> the better it is for you. Like, you yeah. can you can finally move on. Like, this is a long time coming, right? Multiple, five years in a row, we heard, oh, Dane wants to go somewhere else. Like, this is, the faster you get this over with, just start a new chapter and really invest in Scoot and what, what the future for your franchise is going to look like, in my opinion. I'll let you lead the way with the next subject because that was that's all you. <laughs> I mean, it it kind of ties into the the Damian Lillard topic a little bit um, because his name was brought up as a possible trade destination, being the Clippers and Paul George for Damian Lillard. Um, and again, they, uh, the Paul George content is pretty much surrounded by just the other trade trade um, assets around the league, being James Harden, being Damian Lillard. Um, Possibly even uh, a swap with like Jalen Brown. It, it was potentially what uh, brought up. And again, his name, he hasn't demanded a trade or anything like that. But just because his name is being brought up in these trade rumors, um, is it's just something to keep an eye on. Um, I don't think the Clippers are ready to break up the band in L.A. But I, I do think they 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 if they they will listen to offers depending on what what's being said and who what team it's from. So I I do think they're just listening to everything, watching and listening to everything going around. But I I, I do think that's something just to possibly keep an eye out on. It's not really much about it, but if Paul George was to go anywhere else, um, I think it can shape depending on what team he goes to. It can shape the the um the dynamics in the league in regards to who's the favorite etc depending on what team he goes to yeah clippers are just in a weird spot in general like i wouldn't want to go into any season knowing my two-star players are just injury prone or like they're great talents but we don't Mm. know if they're both gonna be on the court at the same time specifically Kawhi, you know he's got his knee issues that keep coming back and forth and just i don't Paul George is having his issues constantly. Like, I just don't see a bright future for the Clippers. I don't, I don't see how you can have any confidence going into a season with both of them. Like, you know, it's it's okay if your secondary is always hurt, something like that. Like your, you know, like a Chris Middleton or something. You can work around that. But having yeah. both your core guys out, I just, I, I wouldn't want to be in that fan base, to be honest with you. I feel you. You know what I mean? But we're going to football, all right? Uh, but before we go to that, let's talk about our Dread Sox sponsorship. Shout out to them. Always thinking about protective hair care. If you wear locks or have protective styles in your hair, make sure to check them out. They have what you need uh, to go to sleep at night or just walk around your house uh, and keep your hair protected, moisturized, and lint-free. Uh, with that being said, check out this commercial we got for them. If you're watching the YouTube content, here you go. We are 
are back and we are moving on to our streaming schedule. Make sure you come check us out at 7 p.m., 7.05, 7.10, something like that. Every Thursday night, we stream on YouTube Live and kick. Uh, Trey, you want to talk anything about it? Yeah, just continue to share that news. Um, we'll continue to post it um, on our social media platforms, being Twitter. Um, and again, if you guys could just follow that link, share it to, on your uh, pages, that would be great. Um, so yeah, just continue to do that, and we look forward to it. Absolutely, absolutely love when the chat is lit uh, on our live streams. So yeah, 7 o'clock every Thursday, make sure you come check us out. With that being said, let's move on to the AFC South. We are reviewing a NFL division every week up until the season starts. We only have like a month and a half. Uh, we got four, I think it's four weeks until the um, Hall, Hall of Fame game. Uh, and month, then after yep. that, we've only got couple weeks after that until the season starts so we are moving into nfl content which is my favorite content i love basketball but like football is where the heart is uh and with that being said afc south what's the first thing you want to talk about well the worst team in that division um in my opinion <laughs> it just might be the big i'm just debate. playing <laughs> my 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 uh, i'm gonna go with the texans i think that's the worst team in that division uh, I know they got their little high draft picks and all that. I don't think it's enough. I still think they're going to be the worst in that division. Um, I like what they did with their head coaching and getting uh, D'Amico Ryans. I think it was a good pickup. I think he is a great going to be a good coach for them. Um, I don't think that's going to change anything this year, though. Uh, so with that being said, uh, I'm looking. I'm I'm curious to see how C.J. Stroud plays. Uh, I think he is going to be a stud for them. I just think, again, he's a rookie, and you can't put too much pressure on a rookie quarterback to expect have, uh, have high expectations for them. So that's my fourth ranking in that division right now. Uh, I do not think that the Texans are the worst team uh, in that division. But Ooh. since we're here, I will talk about them. I actually think they're in a better place uh, than I would say the mass public just because they do have C.J. Stroud. I'm a big believer in C.J. Stroud. I also think that helps them be better than the team I think isn't as good as them. Uh, but that they have a foundation around them in C.J. Stroud. Like they have a focus point of going forward. They know who's going to be the starter. Um, they also have some young receiver talent really excited about, um, especially – John Mitchie actually getting a, a, a chance. I probably said his last name wrong, but whatever. Trey, you, you look very curious. I'll let you I, don't, don't talk about the Texans. Just not who you picked. Who is your fourth worst team? Well, well, well I'm going to let you pick the order, and I'll just talk about them and when when they, when they come up in the thing. I don't know. I don't know. We'll, we'll fix up that. Soon, I promise. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll fix that. I just, I just want to know why they, they, you feel like they're better. But that's what you're talking about. So. Well, I, I just, I purely just think C.J. Stroud is going to have a really good rookie season. I think that's going to make them stick out uh, a lot better than how a lot of people anticipate. A lot of people anticipate them playing this season. Uh, I'm going to rock with C.J. Stroud. I think that, you know, they're they have a young team overall. But I think because of him being the base, I think he's going to pop. And that's literally, I think he, they're still like the second to worst team in this, you know, conference. But like, I still think that they're, he's going to show out. And that's purely the only reason why I don't think he, they're the worst. Okay. I respect that. You want to go to my number three? Go ahead. Number three. My number three would be the, hmm. My number three would be the, the actually is going to be the Titans. Cool. Um, I think the Titans last year they had their chance of of have uh fighting for that playoff spot. It was a do or die game with the Jags, where they shouldn't have been in that boat in the first place. The Jags should have walked away with that division, but they started off slow. And the Titans, I feel like they just don't have enough offense. Their receiving core is very in question right now. Even if they got D Hop, I still think it would be. In question, 
Um, again, even nobody's really a believer in Ryan Tannehill. Um, and again, he is going to be their starter. So it's just a matter of time before they pull the plug on him. And by then, I think the team is going to be just done by then. I do like their defense. I think their defense is going to keep them in games. But I do think their offense is not going to produce enough to keep – like, I think their defense is going to be on the field too long. Their defense is going to be drained. And coming from a team of my favorite team being that way from numerous years, I think it's going to, it's going to, it's going to wear and tear on them. So I do ha- – I have the Titans at three. How do you feel about their quarterback situation? I don't – I think at this point, don't even you, – you saw what Tannehill can do. You did. At this point, I would, I would start uh, Will Levis. I would. And that's the exact reason why they are the worst football team in this conference. Uh, or division, sorry. This division. Uh, just because I do not believe in Tannehill anymore. I don't believe in Will Levis at all. I think they're still undecided on who's going to be the quarterback. I don't care who gets the starting job to start the season. Because they're going to be back and forth between these guys no matter what. Mm-hmm. And, you know, no offense, but, you know, we've seen how that looked. We saw it last year, right? With, uh, it was Ron Tannehill and the, was it the guy that got drafted in the third round? Malik, Malik Willis. Malik yeah, he's Willis. still there. He's still there. Oh, he's still there. He'll be released. He won't be part. There's no way they're going to make him part of, uh, that 54, uh, team roster. I but he's don't. not even bad. He is bad, bro. Because he, so the pro, Malik Willis's big problem is he, isn't there yet to be able to go through his read. So he, what happens is even when like no one's in the backfield, he just, he hikes it. He panics all of a sudden. Like he's, you know how, uh, who's it? The used to say they used to see ghosts for the fucking jets. Uh, or somebody, uh, Sam Darnold, you say he saw ghosts. That's literally what happens. And he'll take it. He won't even give the chance to look through his reads. He'll just take off running. I, I, which, I thought he was going to be good coming out of college. I I actually had, I thought he was going to be a lot better than what he ended up being. But it just is what it is. But I think Will Levis isn't the guy you want him to be. I've heard, well, this is fluff time for like your rookie quarterbacks to hear good things. I've only heard bad things about this man uh, in training camp. Well, not training camp, but uh, your mandatory camp. I've only heard bad things about him. Uh, Ryan Tannehill, I think, is just wasted. Just he's just take. He's like the Jimmy G for the Titans. He's just like the go-to when everything is down and out. It's they don't know who's going to be the leader of that team, and I think because of that, they're going to have a terrible season. I this is how I see it playing out. Okay, they go into the season. Of course, they're going to run Derrick Henry five thousand hundred fucking times. He's going to end up getting hurt. It just is what it is. Like, I'm not hoping it on him. I just see it happening. And Mm -hmm. then they're back depending on these two quarterbacks who they don't know is going to lead the way. And it just falls apart. They don't have any receivers. Again, you can't. this This is what the problem is. You can't even try to develop your rookie quarterback if you don't even have receivers or receiver talent to really know what he is. Mm-hmm. It's the same problem that the Patriots have. Is they have a quarterback who has just been mismanaged, and he could be good, he could be bad. I probably think he, Mac Jones sucks, but we don't even have the receiver talent, true receiver talent, to really see what he is. So you don't, the, you never get to see what he is. So go ahead, say something. Say something about the, 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 the Patriots. The Texans have a better receiving core than the Titans right now. Absolutely. I don't see, I think it's both the same. I think they both trashed, but nah, no, the Titans is bad. T- Titans is 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 not up there. At least you got you got Mechie, you got Nico Collins who has been a bright spot. Like he's you know, he's not popping off, but like he's a young receiver who kinda popped off last season as much as you want to call it pop off. But like there there's some young talent there where there there's a maybe for the Titans. I had nothing, man. It, and last year was I couldn't watch the Titans game, bro. It was that it was it was honestly that bad. I just I'm not excited about the the Titans. So the, I'll, I'll go with the team that has the clean the clear focus when it comes to leadership or the team when it comes to quarterback. And I feel bad for Derrick Henry because they're just gonna run his ass into the the ground 
And they'd be like, all right, well, we'll give you three mil a year because we fucking ran you into the ground and we don't think you're worth shit anymore. <laughs> and, I mean, I would still say, I know you said, uh, um, who'd you say? Uh, you said Nick Chubb is the best running back in the league. But, I mean, Derrick Henry is the man <laughs> that is the best oh, running back oh, out here. Oh, but, poor guy is just on a, a terrible team. But, go ahead. Yeah. Hey, yeah. You know, all right. Um, well, I'm. I'm. I can't. I'm not. I thought you was gonna go somewhere else with that number four, but I'm glad you didn't. Um, so you got. I got the Titans. I mean, I got the the Texans, and then I got the Titans. And number two, clearly, I would have the Colts. I think they just had a good. I think they had a good draft. I think, in my opinion, Anthony Richardson is gonna be. I have him winning offensive player rookie of the year. Um, I think he's going to be a stud in this offense. I mean, they still they have a good offense around him. They got players. The only thing they got to they got to fix or hopefully can hold up is that offensive line. But everything else around him, he has a decent receiving core. He has one of the best running backs in the league, and Jonathan Taylor. Um, and his defense is young and has been keeping them together for freaking the last three, four years. Because clearly their offense have been shitty as hell. But again, their defense is what's been keeping them in game. So now I, I, just, I just think Anthony Richardson is going to put them over the hump. I think they're they're going to be competing with my number one team in this division. Um, if Anthony Richardson could, could live up to the expectations that I have him for. But I do think in general they're, they're going to be – the second best team in this division. I'm on the same page with you. Anthony Richardson, I think it's going to be two outcomes. I hope he pops off. I really think he will. I think he will. It's going to be a little rough maybe to start, or you know, he might have a couple good games to start with, but there's going to be a, a rough transition phase for him. But I mm -hmm. still think he'll end up having a good season overall. Uh, you know, they got plenty of receiver talent. Out there with him, they got Pittman, they got uh, Josh Downs. They just drafted. They have uh, what's the white or light skin kid they got out there that popped off last season? I can't remember his name off the bat. Uh, he's great. They just have a a good base, and again, they have a clear vision for their team and what they want it to look like. Mm -hmm. I could also see this going. Uh, in a way that really benefits who we all assume is going to be the number one team in this uh, division. In the Jags of the Texans, the Colts, and the Titans just look shitty all season. And the the Jags end up having 12 wins because they're blowing these teams out and pretty much got off weeks because they're going to be so good compared to these other three teams if the Colts don't work out. Now, if, they, if the Colts are good and Richardson can really give them a, a chance to fight, you know, this might look way different. But I mm -hmm. honestly see, we'll get to the Jags in just a minute, but I could see this really being a lopsided event where it really helps these Jags really have a game-breaking season and something that's way different for Jag fans that they haven't seen in a long time. I like I said, I agree. I, I think if if the Jaguars start off slow like they did last year, I think if the if a team like the Colts with again with Anthony Richardson playing even decent, I think it will give them a scare. And again, they won't be in a situation like they were last year being the Jags to even fight for a playoff spot. Um, Cause let's be real, no team is coming out of here. In my opinion, no team is coming out of here. If you're not winning this division, you're not making the playoffs. I don't see them being an eight and eight or a nine and seven team coming in there saying we're going we're making the playoffs this year. That's not happening. Um, not in the AFC is too stacked. It's only going to be division leaders in this division. Um, so again, I do hope Anthony Richardson is able to at least be decent his year one, and then he'll take that year two leap. I'm hoping for it. I think he's a stud. He could he could he could he can he's a smart quarterback. He can run. He's mobile. He's freaking fast as hell. That's underrated for his size and speed. The dude is freaking 6'4", for God's sakes. Like, the, the dude is huge. Like, the dude is freaking huge. So, and, I, I, I think. And he's, he, he's great. And this is the only hesitation I give him. It's not him. It's more of the team. Is Like, think about how bad that team was last year when they were going mm -hmm. through a, you know, freaking head coach and Jeff Saturday. 
and yeah. watching them just hoping to put up three points a game. Like I just I have a hard time believing that they can go from that to this season really balling out. And I don't care how good Richardson is. Like I he could be he could have a Cam Newton type of season, right? Mm. But it's hard for me to really think that team just automatically turns it around without already knowing that Richardson is not just good, but like <laughs> game breaking and a great leader. Like that's what it takes to turn a whole franchise around. We might be a little premature on this Colts team being good. It might take a season or two, but I think we're we're in the same page as far as where the, those Colts are going. Uh, I just don't know if it's going to happen this season. That's my only thing. And also, also you got to remember, too, Jonathan Taylor was injured a lot of games last year. Yeah. He didn't play a lot of those games. So, again, you had Matt Ryan out there running for his fucking life, his old ass. And again, he he was able. He had games where he was decent, but again, it wasn't just enough. There was no running game, etc. But again, I, I I do think they'll have enough to to win some games. Again, we'll we'll see if they're able to do that or not. I I think it's great. I honestly I, I wasn't thinking of Jonathan Taylor. I, it just he just wasn't in my mindset when just talking about the team. But I think you make a really good point. You know, I want to see how that dynamic goes as far as run versus pass uh, ratio and how often are they going to expect Richardson to run. It would be nasty, man. I'm just saying, if you got an option with him and Jonathan Taylor, oh, my God. Like, you don't know who to tackle. And like I said, they both fast, both got vision. I'm just saying, watch out. Watch out. For the viewers out there, I think that's an, a big key to really watch out this season is how is Richardson developing as a player, what that relationship on the field looks like between him and Taylor, uh, Jonathan Taylor, um, and how often you know that pass-to-run ratio looks like for that team. Um, and Specifically, those first few weeks are really going to be important just because if he's getting obliterated before he even has a chance to run, because the offensive line, it could really dispel the whole season and, and really tear it up. But I, I'm with you. I hope he gets the chance to really develop. And I hope he just gets the chance to just ball out and just fucking destroy the rest of this damn you know, division. So Jaguars, Jags. Ah, Sunshine! My really fucking just, guy. My dark horse MVP candidate. Fucking sunshine, Trevor Lawrence. That motherfucker is a beast, and I think he walks away winning his division easy, winning at least eleven games. Um, and I think again they, that that offense being his second year under Doug Peterson, I just think it's going. Like I said, you saw it click later. They squeaked by the Chargers in that playoff game, making a mean comeback. And now they got a whole nother year for him to be in that offense, be comfortable. They got Calvin Ridley back from suspension. I I think they're going to be freaking disgusting. I think they're going to, their offense is going to be flying. Their defense needs a little bit more pass rush because um, they only got um, Walker and – is it Jack? They only got two pass rushes. So beyond them, they have no depth. Uh, but other than that, I think their offense is what's going to keep them. They're able to score points, and I think that's what they figured out. Doug Peterson's a guy that's able to put up numbers. He's able to make his quarterbacks look good. Trevor Lawrence doesn't need that, but in a sense of he can do it himself, but that just adds to it when you have an offensive-minded coach and a freaking a beast of a quarterback who knows how to make reads, who knows how to make the right plays, who can bounce back when he is making bad plays in, in a dump. He can shake it off and come back better. I mean, we saw him make three picks in a playoff game and still happen to win the shit. The guy is a fucking cannon, and I think it's a easy eleven wins for them this year. I'm I'm right there with you. I don't know about eleven. I'm I'm gonna base ten, just kind of lower my expectations a little bit. But I'm right there with you. I mean, I'm not gonna argue with one win. And you have Doug Peterson, who is a Super Bowl caliber head coach who's shown that he can win at the highest level. You also have Sunshine. I like to call him Terminator because this man has no emotion and just be out there balling. <laughs> you know, whether you call him Sunshine or Terminator, he's he's just, his um, he is what 
Matt Ryan was really good at when they were calling him ice cold and he would just go out there and ball no emotion. That's the type of guy you want. Uh, I would like him to show a little bit of emotion on, as far as the leadership, you know. But if that's what he does, that's what he does, and that's how he wins. I also think that I don't know. I do think it. it a lot of this really depends on how good really is. How do you feel about Jamal Agnew coming out and saying that no one can guard really in the NFL? I think that's a, that's a little bit overdoing it. I think again, the year before when he was with Atlanta, he was a uh, statistically he was a top ten receiver. So it's not a like crazy understatement, but it is like I mean, it, it's it's too say it's too soon to say that. I know that's your teammate. You know, I know you see him in practice probably cooking your DBs. But I mean, let's be real. Who's, <laughs> who's your DBs? Um, but in general, it's like, I mean, again, he was statistically before he got suspended or the year before he was a top 10 receiver. So again, to add that to that offense is going to be just even more wild and it's going to be more eye popping and crowd oozing on. So again, yeah, I, I do think in general, adding somebody like Calvin Ridley to that offense is going to, it's going to pop now. It's definitely going to pop. It. I, I'm super fascinated to see what he does with when I say he, Trevor Lawrence, does with Calvin Ridley just because, you know, we really haven't seen him with like that type of talent before, you know, that 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 type of wide receiver, and I think seeing him with Christian Kirk last season, I he was one of my favorite players to watch. And one of the most consistent, he almost had a touchdown every single game in Christian Kirk. And he did amazing jobs in that slot. I just, I want to continue to see him ball out and really get his. If they can find a way to make all that work. Plus, you've got Evan Ingram. I believe he's still with the team as, as tight end. Man, and he's then speedy my, my. as hell. Road runner. Just be, I want to see this man on a vertical every damn play we got and I just think they have a lot to work with uh and this season is going to be amazing for the the Jags I just and 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 let's not forget let's not forget my man ETN in the backfield yep. that man can yep. haul ass that man yep. is a is a dog in a sense of he he could play through injuries you won't know it he'll run through the biggest motherfuckers anytime and his he's on 10 100 Twenty percent of the times he's on ten, he is gone, and his downhill speed is is crazy. Again, they're, they're just they're they're gonna put up numbers. If they can't beat you because of their defense, they're gonna try to outscore you. And again, I think that's how it's going to be in the AFC. The NFC might be a little bit different, but I think the AFC is gonna be who can outscore who, and rather than whose defense is better. Because again, if you name all the quarterbacks in the AFC, you're gonna be like, God damn. Yeah, you're going to need to outscore. You're going to need to put up 30 points a game to possibly even win a game. You're going to need that, and they have it. They have all the pieces for that. Well, I think you bringing up ETN is such a great point because, again, I'm on the same page as you. Uh, I really see him. If he if this is his year, right, his pop-off year where he really turns into something else, I think it could add an extra dimension onto the offense that really enhances – the Christian Kirk and the Ridley and the Evan Ingram and really opened everything up. And if, if ETN really goes off, man, I think that whole offense could be something that we haven't seen in a very long time. Like I just, I think it could really open up for all, for all of them. If, if I don't know, man, it, but at the same time, it's something about the, just Jags that just it's hard to believe that they're gonna have a great team. Besides from- It is. It is. I, I, I get you. But again, I, I like I I ain't gonna lie, I got excited just talking about again just their offense because I that's my Madden team. That is one of my that's one of my <laughs> Madden teams. And again, I'm I tear motherfuckers up with them. I tear motherfuckers up. So hey if you're on PS5, yo, we can add I'll rock with you and I'll dog you with them. But I'm telling you, they next year. Trevor Lawrence is going to be a, a, a high possibility of getting that um, MVP, definitely. MVP candidate. Yep, yep, yep. I'm right there with you. All right. With that being said, this is going to wrap up this week's episode of the Nuff Said Podcast. This is episode number seven, and I cannot wait for 
Next week will be two months, man, that we really put into this, and it's been constantly growing. Really excited uh, from the support from you guys. We just, again, growth at a constant rate, and we're going to turn this into something that you guys are really going to enjoy from week to week and really want to, to go out of your way to watch this. So with that being said, thank you guys. Trey, do you want to leave with the lasting message? No, I just appreciate y'all. Again, on social medias, uh, again, we interact with those who take the time to uh, interact with us. Um, we appreciate it. Even again, if it's negative, positive, whatever, you'll get a response from one of us. Um, so again, that really depends on you. But again, we we do appreciate your, your posts and your time. Uh, so just continue to share that. And like I said, we appreciate it. Yes, sir. All right, man. I'm about to get over here and go uh, Jalen Green it up. You know what I'm saying? All right. We out of here, guys. See y'all later.